Welcome friends to another r slash pro revenge video. Today we've got some great stories of revenge against dentists, neighbors, Costco. But first, a story from Soccer Girl. My boyfriend looked up spoilers to our favorite video game, so I did too. My boyfriend and I play Zelda Breath of the Wild together. I'm a take your time and enjoy the ride kind of gal, while he's a let's look up how to beat this game right now kind of guy. Because his way ruins all the fun, we came up with a rule. No looking up spoilers. We were looking for a particular challenge, the 8 heroines side quest for my fellow Zelda nerds, for a very long time. Suddenly, my boyfriend said, I did something bad, I looked up where to go. I'm so sorry, I just couldn't take it anymore. I told him that it was fine, but he could not tell me what he had seen. He agreed. I then excused myself to the bathroom and looked up the location as well. I then spent the next hour and a half wandering so close to the location without ever making it there. I could see him squirming around in his seat every time I got close. When I jumped off the cliff the statue was built into, gliding down to the base of the statue and continuing on without turning around to look at it, I thought he was going to explode. He was clenching his hair and both fists and biting his lower lip trying to contain himself. That's when I caved and told him what I had done. He thought it was hilarious and told me about how he wanted more than anything to yell, Turn around! What are you doing? We had a good laugh about it. He hasn't looked up a spoiler since. I think when you're doing something like this to play it together and just have some fun, it's definitely no fun to look up spoilers unless you're both to the point where you're both totally burned out and you decide, okay, forget it, we'll just look up where to go. Although personally, I'll say that there's no shame in being the kind of person that wants to look up the spoilers. Honestly, as you get more and more into your adult life, if you enjoy playing games, you realize there really is only like a limited window you usually get in a day. A lot of times you kind of want to just look up where to go because you don't really have that much time and you don't want to wander around wasting it. What do you guys think? When playing games, do you think there's shame just instantly going to a guide on what to do? Like instead of giving it an honest go at it, you just go straight to a guide. I'll tell you sometimes, especially if I'm trying to create a video about games for like a YouTube channel, there are a lot of times where I just want to go straight to a guide so it isn't like waffling around. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is from Shoutem. Won't turn your TV down? Meet my high power remote. This was many years ago. When we moved to the city, we had a 14 foot by 70 foot trailer house that we moved here and set up in a fairly nice trailer park. I know, I know, but we owned it and it beat renting an apartment for a few years while we looked at houses. The trailer next door was a rental and a young couple moved in. The girl would walk around unclothed inside and never pulled the curtains on our side, but that's a different story. One day, the guy and his friends muscled in this huge rear projection TV. It turns out he was quite the sports and movie fan and turned the sound up to incredible volumes. It must have gone to 11. We didn't have AC so we had to leave the windows open and it drowned out the sound from our TV most nights. We did ask him numerous times to turn it down. Anyone remember Computer Shopper? It was this huge tabloid sized magazine on newsprint with loads of ads for electronics and computer stuff. There was this ad for a high power universal remote. You set it for different brand TVs with dip switches inside. I just so happen to remember the brand of this huge TV from the box, so I ordered it. It turns out I could bounce its signal off a mirror in their living room onto their TV. For a couple of weeks, I would wait until a big play was about to happen in whatever game he was watching, and then switch his channel. If he was watching a movie, I would do the same. His cussing was epic. Apparently he went and bought a new remote control, which was no cure. One day he and his friends muscled the TV into a pickup truck to take to a shop. Of course, nothing was found to be wrong with it. It wasn't back for one day when I started changing his channels again, or turning the sound volume up and down, or turning the TV off. I don't think he watched a complete game or movie for quite some time. They moved out a few months later, and I had to seek new ways to amuse myself. I'm assuming that this IR blast had to be pretty powerful to bounce off of that mirror, so I think I'm just more impressed that at some point during all of this, they didn't notice this red light bleeping through their window off of a mirror. Like it totally worked out, but you feel like at some point they would just happen to see it. That said though, they kind of deserve it living in a trailer park and being that inconsiderate about their sound and profile. Our next story is from Alan's Monkey Tennis. If you won't be considerate in the mornings, nor will I. Neither my partner nor I are morning people. 
So we take it in turns to walk the dog before work in the morning and do the couple of chores that need sorting before we leave. When I get up, I use a vibrating alarm and immediately head into the bathroom to get ready to cause as little disturbance to my partner as possible. My partner uses loud alarms, ignores them, and then just lies there until I force him up. He goes in and out of the end suite that has a mirror hanging on the door, both creating a lot of noise and filling the room with sunlight. He tries to talk to me, throws stuff on the bed, gets ready right there in the room and sits down heavily next to me to spray deodorant and brush his hair. He then doesn't do the minimal amount of chores that need doing before we leave. It's annoying as all heck because I make the effort to ensure that he gets extra rest in the morning. Recently I've had a particularly difficult couple of weeks at work, which has made this behavior even more frustrating for me. This difficult period at work is an ongoing thing and won't be sorted for several weeks, potentially longer. So I asked him to get ready in the mornings in another room to allow me that extra rest. He got annoyed with me and was rude in his response, complained about it because his clothes are in the bedroom. I'm not getting up, he's just getting ready, etc, etc. When I noted my wardrobe isn't in the main bathroom, he said I keep my clothes for the day in there for some reason. I explained it was for his sake and he remained as annoying and rude in his response as he had been previously. So tomorrow I'm going to set a loud, annoying alarm and I'm going to ignore it. And a second. I'm then going to get ready in the bedroom. I'm going to talk to him, dump all my stuff on the bed, go in and out of the end suite, spray deodorant, sit down on the bed to brush my hair. I'm going to do everything that he does exactly as he does it. And I'll do the same again on Friday when he has the day off and I don't. Because work for me right now is hellish and it would be absolutely nice if I could get that little bit of extra rest every other morning. But I don't. Petty? Sure. Satisfying? Absolutely. Now my modicum piece of advice and maybe more of a warning to OP here is if somebody is that uncaring about waking you up and not giving you a chance to get that extra restful sleep, Be prepared for when you try to turn the tables here for them to not care themselves. In fact, I think I've heard a story kind of similar to this where they try to turn the tables on their partner by doing the exact same thing, being loud, waking them up, going in and out of the room, and the partner just was kind of fine with it. Our next story is from Weary Construction 26. You diss me for helping around the house? I'll humiliate you. This was about 14 years ago. I'm married and have three daughters. I'm male. So I was at a new job and was talking about some housework I was doing. A coworker we'll call Chad proceeds to give me grief because I do housework, says offensive stuff that I'm not going to repeat here. Anyways, it doesn't take me long for me to learn Chad is recently divorced. He bemoans the fact all the time. He's obsessed that his wife left him. He doesn't understand why she left. Fast forward a couple of weeks and a bunch of coworkers and myself are talking about life. Normal stuff. Chad walks up and proceeds to give me a grief for doing housework. I look at him and say, at least I'm still married. Our co-workers are oh and burn and they all break out in laughter. Chad's face turns bright red and he walks away. He never spoke to me again. I think I'm saying what pretty much everybody hearing this story is thinking, it's no wonder that they got a divorce. If you're the kind of person that's willing to put any person down, man or woman, for doing household chores, I'm just willing to bet that you have an incredibly high chance of relationships not lasting. I don't mean to be disrespectful when I say that either, I just think if you're not at least willing to do something around the house, you think it's below you. I feel like that's something that builds up with a partner and it's going to become an issue sooner or later. Do you guys agree? Let me know in the comments. Our next story is from Viper Threat dentist office wouldn't stop calling me. The setup here is pretty simple. Some woman named Bella gave a dental office my phone number, which resulted in me getting hundreds of voicemails and text messages about her dental treatment. I assume she was British or something. Multiple calls to the dental office didn't seem to help the problem. I was told they would fix it at least a dozen times, but they never did. At the time, the call slash text blocker on my phone wouldn't work right and I didn't want to buy a new phone just to stop getting their texts and calls. One day in particular, after ignoring four calls before 8am from the clinic, I finally reached my breaking point. So when the fifth call came in, I answered. The dentist says, hi, is this Bella? I said, no, this is Bella's husband. Bella is currently unavailable. What can I do for you? 
They say, I'm just calling to confirm her dentist appointment for so-and-so. I said, oh, he can't make that. He's scheduled for a gender reassignment surgery that day. They say, I see, would you like to reschedule? I say, we'll call you once we figure out Bella's availability. The following year-ish was much of the same. Them calling or texting me to confirm appointments and me giving increasingly outrageous medical reasons for canceling. You'd figure the fourth gender reassignment surgery, second brain transplant, or the third circumcision might have given them the hint. But the calls and texts only seemed to grow more frequent, much to my joy. They did eventually figure it out and called me to chew me out. They said, hi, is Bella available? I said, no, this is her husband speaking. What can I do for you? They say, I know you aren't your husband. Who are you? I say, how do you know I'm not Bella's husband? They say, Bella says she isn't married. Who are you? I said, you called me. Who do you think I am? They say, why have you been canceling Bella's appointments? I say, why have you been calling me about Bella's appointments? This is Bella's phone number. I say, you just called that number, right? They say, yes. Did Bella answer? They say, no. So is this Bella's number? Silence, and then, but why have you been canceling her appointments? I say, I figured I was doing her a favor. They say, how so? You've been calling me for over two years now, despite my repeated and numerous requests that you stop. I figure that if you're so unprofessional that you can't fix a single phone number in your system, she's probably better off with a different dentist. They say, you think this is funny? I say, honestly, at first it was irritating, but now it's the highlight of my day. They say, you've been screwing with somebody's health. You know that, right? That's illegal. I say, you may want to stick to receptionist. You make a bad lawyer. They say, what do you know about the law? I say, enough to know that the medical information you've been sending me about your client is a clear violation of HIPAA. They say, oh. I say, so yeah, sorry, Bella can't make it to her dentist appointment next week. She's getting plastic surgery to have her fingers webbed. Funny enough, the call stopped after that. Honestly, I think OP's right here. An office that literally cannot get one number straight after being told repeatedly that it wasn't the right number. I mean, I'm not very experienced with this kind of thing, but I would imagine that that kind of stuff happens at some cheapo office that is just trying to churn some customers. Our next story is from an anonymous poster. I have an evil streak and it comes out in the Costco parking lot. Costco parking lot is always busy. I don't know why, but it drives me crazy when people drive slowly behind when I exit the store hoping to take my parking spot. Some instinct in me hates being followed, especially by a slow moving vehicle. I developed three different strategies to deal with this. Yes, I know I'm evil. One, the wander. Exactly as it sounds, I wander aimlessly down random rows, pushing my cart as if I forgot where I parked and see how long I can hang on to the followers. Two, the split. I intentionally push my cart down the wrong row, several rows away from where I actually parked. Then when I'm halfway down the row, I split in between cars across several rows to where I actually parked, leaving the followers in their cars stranded. 3. The Vanish I lead the followers to my car, unload my groceries into the back of my vehicle, then being a responsible person, I return my cart to the corral. As they wait for me to return, I duck in between cars and vanish sneak all the way behind parked cars back to the food court and enjoy a hot dog and a soda. Don't follow me. I'm evil. Sorry, not sorry. I don't know how to really describe it, but I vibe with OP here. There's like this feeling of not wanting to reward somebody that is overly eager. I mean, riding up right behind you and just watching you while you're putting your groceries away, just anticipating your parking spot. I mean, I know you're in a public parking lot, but it still feels like a weird invasion of privacy and a jerk move. And you just don't want them to get away with it. You don't want to reward them with finally giving them that spot. Our next story is from Rodeo Pete 3281 Neighbors used my property as their own, paid for new fence. I recently bought a house, and I've been having some work done before I move in. It was empty on the market for about six or eight months before I bought it. One morning, I got a call from my contractor asking me about moving cars in the driveway. And of course I had no idea what he was talking about. I hadn't moved in yet. I left my job site and drove nearly half an hour to get there. As soon as I arrived, the people on the east side of me were walking towards the cars. I asked if they were their cars, and they said yes. They told me that they'd been parking there for a few months with permission from the owners. I informed them that I was the new owner, and they can't park there any longer. 
We went back and forth, and with the intention of being a good neighbor and trying to show some goodwill, I agreed to allow them to park there for a few more weeks until I move in, with the agreement that they would move them by 6am every morning. The rest of the week went by without incident. The contractor called me about scheduling a walkthrough on Saturday, and we set a time for early afternoon. When I arrived, there were four cars in the driveway and nowhere to park. The only on-street parking is two blocks away. I called them and asked them to move their vehicles, reminding them of our agreement. After 20 minutes, they finally came out and moved them. Speaking with them, they claimed to have misunderstood and thought our agreement only referred to weekdays and not weekends. I corrected them and moved on. Sunday morning, I grabbed a trailer and loaded some furniture to take over and store in the garage. Once again, there were cars in the driveway. I called them and got voicemail. I texted and said they had until a tow truck could arrive to get them moved. No answer? I called the tow company. 45 minutes later, two tow trucks showed up, backed in and hooked up to the cars. All of a sudden, the neighbors were home. They ran out to stop their cars from being towed and it ended up costing them a little over $300 to get them unhooked. I called my contractor and asked if he knew someone who could put in a driveway gate, and he did. I let the neighbors know that they could no longer use my driveway. On Wednesday, I get a call from the gate installer, telling me that there's cars in the driveway. I called them and said tow trucks are on the way. They moved. The gate was installed, and I went by to pick up the opener that evening. The neighbor husband came out to confront me, and I opted to just call the police department and deal with it illegally. That Saturday, I went by to accept an outdoor furniture delivery and check on things when I noticed a towel beside the pool and a small kid's flotation device. My initial thought was that I just hadn't noticed it before, so I wrote it off and threw them both in the trash. On Saturday, the movers arrived with everything and we began moving things in. About 7pm, my daughter and I left to go grab some dinner, arriving back at the house around 9.30pm. The neighbors were in my pool. They were hanging out and using my furniture. When I opened the door and began raising heck, they told the kids to go to the house and the children ran to a corner of our fence and just walked through. They had cut out the privacy fence so it could be removed and had been using the pool at their leisure for who knows how long. Again, I called the police and filed a complaint. The dad was arrested for trespassing, destruction of private property, and an outstanding warrant and the oldest boy, 20-year-old male, for an outstanding warrant. I replaced the fence with a new one because they destroyed the posts, runners, and pickets by removing and reinstalling the panel. Small claims awarded me the total cost of 83 feet by 8 feet of privacy fence, which came out to $3,800. The following Monday morning, around 5 a.m., their cars were parked in the street, where there's no street parking, so I made a phone call. They were gone when I left at 7 a.m. I haven't been paid yet, but I did notice a for rent sign in their yard this morning, so that's just as good. Good riddance. I mean, how bad of a neighbor can they possibly be? You would think they would stop messing with the neighbor's stuff once they called the tow truck on them and they had to pay 300 bucks. But no, these people were insane. They just straight up sawed a part of your fence off so they could move in and use your stuff whenever they wanted because you just weren't around. I'd be concerned for my safety going forward living next to people like that who not only were willing to do all that, tried to confront OP, but also had outstanding warrants. I mean, it just seems like the worst kind of people to live next to and be on bad terms with. Our next story is from Well Freak Me, I guess. Sister-in-law makes ableist comments towards me. Brother-in-law gets petty over Facebook. A bit of context, I, female 25, am currently pregnant with my wife, female 27, and I's first child. My sister-in-law, female 32, is pregnant with her second and believes that everything I do with my pregnancy that isn't how she does things is wrong and will hurt the baby. On the other hand, my brother-in-law, male 31, and I are great friends, and him and his boyfriend are extremely supportive of my wife and I. About a week ago, sister-in-law called me lazy for buying a bottle machine for bottle prepping, and stuck to her opinion when I explained that, being an amputee and missing a hand, I struggle with things that are designed to be used two-handed telling my wife and I that having a baby isn't supposed to be easy. This has caused a lot of drama within the family, and my mother-in-law asked me to apologize to keep the peace. Brother-in-law was furious and got mother-in-law to apologize to my wife and I, but decided to get petty with sister-in-law. 
brother-in-law got a Facebook memory of a family bike ride six years ago and saw that sister-in-law was using an e-bike, so he commented lazy on a picture of sister-in-law and her husband in the post. He then went back through sister-in-law's Facebook and commented on every post with anything from a baby bouncer to a laptop to an electric kettle for three years with lazy and she's getting so mad. I don't even understand the sister-in-law's argument here. If something makes doing something much easier, why are you to be shamed for doing that? I feel so bad for the sister-in-law because they must just feel so sick to their stomach every time they have to use the remote to change the channel or turn the volume up on the TV. I mean, the old-fashioned classic correct way would be to just go up and press the buttons. Light bulbs? Flashlights? How lazy can you be? Go back to lighting candles like the old days. And you better believe that you make your own candles, not those processed things. I mean, how dumb of an argument is that? Our next story is from an anonymous poster. Mock my disability? I'll get you fired. So I, 23 year old female, was on the bus to university about two years ago and there was a woman sat two seats in front of me. Now I wear baggy clothes 99% of the time, especially when outside my home, so I had joggers on and a big baggy jumper. I suffer quite a lot with sensory issues, so when in public, I wear my headphones and usually have my hood up and head down. Basically get on and get off as soon as possible, but this day it was quite hot. Not enough to take off my jumper, but enough to roll up my sleeves. So, I have tattoos. This woman had been looking around the bus a lot at this point, and just generally looking around. She saw me stretch my arms up above my head, a common tick, and she approached me. She sat in the seat next to me and was smiling. I tried to be polite, even took out a headphone, which I never do. This lady looked kind enough, older woman with blonde hair. I was curious to why she sat next to me and moved seats, so I just tried to mind my own business. About five minutes later, she tapped me on my shoulder and asked about one of my tattoos. Now, I love getting tattoos. I wish I had more. I find it very therapeutic. She pointed out specifically one on my forearm that's bees and honeycomb. She then asked me if I went to the Ariana Grande concert, to which I said no. I was confused by why she would assume I did, and she could tell, so she said a lot of people who were there got bees tattooed, and I was like, oh, I didn't know that. She continued to ask about my other tattoos, many being family related or dedications. She then saw my last tattoo, a song quote with a puzzle piece, and when I say this woman's face dropped, it dropped. She proceeded to sit up straight and said, That is so disrespectful to autistic people. You should be ashamed of yourself. Don't you know the puzzle piece is linked to a hate group? Do you hate autistic people? I was gobsmacked. I just said like, ma'am, with all due respect, why do you think I have the tattoo? I'm autistic. And she said, you aren't autistic, you're on a bus and you're speaking to me. Do you think it's funny to pretend to be disabled? I work with disabled people, this is disgusting blah blah. I just said, with all due respect, you don't know how long it's taken me to even be able to get on a bus. Never mind stay on one for the full journey. You don't know me or my diagnosis, and that all autistic people are different and show different signs. She kept going on to me about people she worked with and all the jazz, so I asked what company she works for and her name. I basically BS'd my way through, you know, maybe you're right. I would love to be more educated on this like you. She then went on a rant about her work and her stepson for some reason. I ended up getting off the bus early. I just wanted to get off and away from this woman. I ended up going straight home. That was enough human interaction for one day. I went home and told my sister, and she ended up finding the website for the company. My sister went off on it. She was so angry. We ended up calling her company and asked after her, and we finally found her. Let's just say that they had issues with her before, in and out of work. Found out later she got fired for disability discrimination in and out of the workplace. Apparently she hasn't found a job since. Feels good, man. Considering the very last bit OP described here, it seems to me that they were using their job working with disabled people as a crutch to outwardly justify their discrimination of disabled people. Honestly, if you ask me, this is just about as bad as the age-old, well, my friend is so-and-so, therefore I can't be discriminating against anybody that falls under that description. This next story is from Treewater Blue. Call the police on me? I'll get you towed. Where I live, I share a backyard with about five other houses. It's a strange layout where five houses are back-to-back and form a sort of circle. 
Due to that, I legitimately thought that my neighbor's trash bin was ours, as it was right next to our parking spaces. One day, I had the police come to my house and say that the neighbors called them for using their trash can. If I continued to use it, they would take me to court and issue a citation. This was the first time I realized that the trash can wasn't ours, and of course, I then asked my roommates which trash bin was ours and started using the right ones. The neighbors then came up to me and said that if I don't pay their trash bill, they'll proceed to take me to court, otherwise I cough up $100 and they'll leave me alone. If they had simply come up to me and asked me to stop, I would have immediately noticed the mistake, apologized, and explained. However, rather than do that, they took advantage of the situation to get me to pay their bills. At that point, I was pissed. One thing I knew is that they illegally parked their car in the street after parking hours. Where I live, you can't use street parking from 3am to 7am, so I called the parking department about the constantly illegally parked car. The next day, the car was missing, so everything that they just got from me to pay their bills immediately went to the towing company. I mean, to be fair, if I were in the neighbor's position, I probably would be kind of upset too if my neighbor started using my trash bin. But like OP said, they didn't even give them a platform to explain their side. If you're going to come over and accuse people and expect fees to be paid, at least give them a chance to come up with some phony excuse at the worst. That said, our final story of the day is from No Tour Jimmy. Use all the hot water? Fine, I'll just shut it off. This happened to my coworker who has since retired. We work at an iron foundry, and it can be a very dirty place. Coworker lived about three blocks from work and didn't like using the communal shower in the locker room. He lived in a 1950s ranch-style home with his wife and adult daughter. In the typical fashion of a mid-century home, there was only one bathroom in the house. His wife would often complain about the bathroom being messy after he took his shower after work. The house has an unfinished basement, so co-worker decided to build a second bathroom in one corner of it so when he got home from the foundry, he could discard his dirty clothes and shower without tracking a mess through the house. He asked his wife and daughter for input into the design, but they showed no interest. Well, co-worker set to work, and with a little help from some friends, finished his new bathroom in about three weeks' time. The room turned out very nice. It had a toilet, large laundry-style sink, and was adorned with white subway tiles. The showcase was the spacious shower stall with a high-flow shower head, so there was plenty of pressure to wash away all the dust and dirt from a hard day at work. Coworker was very happy, but only for a short time. It turns out his wife and daughter both worked second shift and had taken to using his new shower just before they left for work. And when the coworker would get home, there wouldn't be any hot water. He put up with this for about a week before we got to work on a solution. I should mention that we both worked in industrial automation and couldn't wait to come up with a clever solution to this issue. After about a day of tinkering, we came up with an off-delay timer tied to a solenoid valve. Coworker had a three-fourths of an inch line that went from the water heater directly to the new shower. He initially did this so there would be plenty of pressure, but it also worked out so that whatever we did to the shower wouldn't affect anything else in the house. We put the solenoid valve just before the shower valve and wired it to the timer, which we wired in parallel with the exhaust fan in the bathroom. So, when you turn on the exhaust fan to take a shower, the valve would turn on to feed hot water, but the timer was running. We set the timer for just shy of 10 minutes. Coworker was bald and insisted that it was all the time he needed to get his shower done. He came home the next day to find plenty of hot water, as well as a note from his wife saying there was something wrong with the water heater and he should fix it. After only two days, his wife and daughter were back to using the upstairs bathroom before work. So if I'm gathering everything here correctly, the problem by and large was that high pressure waterhead. Because you have such high pressure, that water is flowing through so quickly, so you have both of these nice relaxing showers back to back. The whole water heater is probably just totally emptied out because of all that water that's just flowing through gallon by gallon. If you don't want to sit down and have a talk about it, you don't want to try to fight for yourself as far as lobbying for just getting 10 minutes of hot water, I mean this is a pretty ingenious way of going about it. 
But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely awesome revenge story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out the video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.